Hi everyone, a very good evening and a very warm welcome to all of you on this Edelweiss Connect Classroom session. My name is Vikram Masand and today I am presenting, actually I'm very excited to present to you a very relevant topic, a topic which addresses the involvement of our emotions and more importantly, I'm sure we all would agree that being emotional somewhere during the course of my investment decision making may actually not be the best way to maximize the potential benefits of my investments. And hence, what I will, what I endeavor to do in the next 30, 35 minutes is, uh, you know, share with you five simple and easy to deploy strategies which can help us all to keep these very emotions out of our investment decisions. The agenda of what we're going to cover today is we'll start with what emotions are. More importantly, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time in identifying three emotions, which when we give into, can actually impact our sound investment strategy. It is these very emotions, which when left unchecked, you know, can in all probability lead us to certain financial decisions, which may be regrettable in hindsight or in the long run. Hence, it will be in our best interest to keep these very emotions out of our investment requirement, investment decisions, investment strategy, investment need, whatever you want to call it. So that's what we we'll focus upon first. Uh, and then we'll move towards five strategies which all of us can very easily put into practice to keep these very negative emotions out of our investment journey and in that endeavor, maximize the potential benefits of our investments. As usual, uh, you know, if there is any query or question that you have, uh, you know, you could put it up in the chat and I'll be more than happy to respond to them towards the end of our session. Uh, so, uh, if there is anything that you would want to ask with regards to what we're discussing, please put it up on the chat and I'll be happy to respond towards the end. Let's start with emotions. Emotions are actually a subjective state of mind, meaning I could react differently with regards to the same thing at different times. So for example, if I'm feeling happy and if, you know, uh, or excited, and if somebody comes and asks me for help, I will in all probability be very willing, willing to help that person. My happy state, you know, may make me go out of my way also to help somebody. Conversely, if I'm feeling, you know, sad or lonely or a little bit of little down, you know, and at that point in time, if somebody comes and asks me for a favor, I may, you know, without even listening to the other person say no. My feeling at that point in time of, of feeling low, uh, you know, makes me perhaps want to be isolated, want to be alone. And hence at that in with, with those very emotions in my mind or my, or what I'm feeling, I may not be in a position or in a state where I may want to help somebody. Hence, what we could say is emotions are usually reactions to whatever my thoughts are, my memories are, whatever events are happening around me. And these emotions usually act as a trigger to how I feel, which then lead me uh, to behave in a, uh, in a particular manner in any given situation. It's a very natural thing, isn't it? And for a lot of us, we would, we would say that, you know, there have been instances or a lot of instances, perhaps, 
wherein my 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 emotions have influenced me to take a certain decision many people you know may even agree uh, and call themselves as emotional beings right so there are a lot of situations when all of us would have would have felt emotional and and somewhere taking a decision based on how i am feeling emotionally however taking these emotional decisions can affect not just the outcome of the decision but also the speed at which i may take the decision so for example you know if if i'm feeling angry then i could take i i i would i would feel impatient i would i would be a little impatient and probably take a rash decision if i'm excited you know i may take a quick decision without probably considering the implications uh, you know that that i should have, i should have considered if i'm afraid uh, you know i would be clouded by uncertainty and i may take longer to choose and make a decision what i'm trying to say is that you know my gut feeling usually plays a very very big part in my decision making process if left unchecked and it may steer me towards taking a decision which may be due to poor judgment or a bias or probably a risk aversion which has you know just come up in the entire process hence it may actually uh, it may very well be prudent for all of us to keep these very emotions out of our investment decision making process then let's let's do a small poll okay and i am going to uh, there's there's going to be a poll question which will present it to you now and it has three options uh, i love i like you to choose any one option and uh, you know basis that uh, you know we we'll probably see what the results are and we'll build and we'll move the session forward so can we have the poll please and um, any of the poll question poll is up so the question is which emotion influences your investment decision the most in here three options one is fear one is greed and one is frustration please choose any one option i'm sure we must have all felt either of if not all of these emotions at some point in time uh, you know and uh, yeah we got results and fear and greed have uh, and then equally well or rather have got similar votes uh, and uh, frustration is 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 probably in the last one okay great so 43% for okay so now we have fear you know moving a little ahead but fear and greed are are, are pretty close in terms of uh, what we we what emotions we feel most with our investments uh, okay great great thanks for that okay great thank you very much for those responses it was a uh... okay thank you very much for those responses it was it was something which gives us an insight and rightfully uh, as we as we all pointed out it is it is 
these emotions which we feel uh, with our investments and and somewhere it's it's it stays with us so what we're going to do next is discuss these three emotions and then post that more towards how we can try or what should we do to avoid falling into this emotional trap especially and specifically when it comes to our investments the first investment or the first emotion that we must keep out uh, in order to you know ensure that it does not negatively impact our investment journey is fear 45 45% of us uh, you know told that we felt fearful with our investments uh, you know during the course of our investment journey uh, and so what usually happens is whenever you know we see the markets declining or or moving or sliding down uh, there's some kind of fear or panic which engulfs me this fear is actually you know my enemy of investing because it somewhere you know stops me from taking advantage of what we call as a rare fire sale opportunity in the market you know so for example i mean if you look at you know uh, march 2020 when the lockdown was announced you know uh, a lot of the, the markets reacted quite quite sharply and plummeted on the negative side right uh, and some of us probably panicked and felt fearful that was going to happen and we would have probably joined the selling bandwagon at that point in time and sold now what what we also saw was that there was a recovery which was also very swift and very quick and this recovery was beneficial only for those investors who did not panic, who did not felt fearful uh, with regards to whatever events were happening around them. And they decided to not let this fear or panic get the better of them and influence their decision making. We need to keep this fear out of our way if we want to build wealth and you know and 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 building wealth is something which only happens if we stay invested over a long period of time markets will be volatile right they will react to whatever is the current situation current news for example there is geopolitical stress currently uh, you know and there are there are other things which are happening and these these this this news which comes you know uh makes me makes my mind play its own game wherein i start thinking what should i be doing and you know in that in that panic or fear which i feel uh you know i may take and take a decision which may actually stop me from generating the the wealth which i which i envisaged when i had invested so we must we must keep this fear and panic out of our investment process. The next emotion that negatively impacts us is greed, which got 41% in the poll, right? right? And this is very honestly, you know, if you look what fear does to the, uh, you know, to the sellers or what when fear forces us to sell greed, this logic, you know, applies on the opposite side. When greed takes over, so on the buy side. So when you see the markets are moving up consistently, you know you, you have a lot of investors who are always pondering whether I should invest or what should I be doing. They are the ones who are sitting on the sidelines and uh, and you know probably invested little. And you start seeing when the broad based markets are running and 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 somewhere running 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 ahead uh, in unison. What we also see is that whatever money we had invested, they also start showing decent appreciation and in that you know i start thinking wow this is doing well i start you know there's there's a certain optimism certain uh you know wave of uh you know people talking very positively about about investing and in that way a lot of lot of investors then starting then start to 
you know amplify and increase their investment thinking that this is a good time to stay invested and in that perhaps i somewhere lose focus on the fundamentals that i used to usually look at that the cycle changes over there and i let and i let greed take over that cycle wherein then i start slowly losing you know uh, the 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 focus which i was looking at the focus with which, with which i was looking at my investments and somewhere you know i i allow myself a little leniency when it comes to investment now what this does is because i have probably not done my due diligence well i have probably not done my research well you know and i have you know uh, let you know uh, the 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 extra positive uh, you know uh, euphoria of the markets take over and allow myself to to buy into the idea that this is this is going to be you know uh, something which is going to continue and and uh, somewhere that you know obviously you know dies out at some point in time and then starts seeing or becoming a bit of a uh, you know not very great investment decision in hindsight so what i have actually done in this is i have let greed take over and make me take some decisions which perhaps are not you know keeping in mind you know the the fundamental research which i must do before any investment so i'll allow greed to take over my my investment journey the third emotion which i should keep in check is frustration which got the least uh, votes about 40% right you know have i have, have you ever felt you know that you 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 invested uh you know uh, into into any any scheme in any security and somewhere you started feeling frustrated by its performance and in that frustration you probably thought hey, this is just not moving so let me let me exit you know there's something known as murphy's law uh you know you exit and then that starts performing uh and you know this is something which perhaps we would have all felt somewhere you know and what 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 actually happened is we got frustrated you know uh, staying invested and not seeing that investment appreciate the way i wanted it to or the way i thought it would and so what i did i did the next best thing i probably dumped it you know i'm not seeing so i'm not saying that we should not assess we should not look whether 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 this this security or the scheme that i have invested into still holds the same fundamental essence but if it is doing so then just because it is not moving currently would that should that become the reason for me to let go of that security or scheme i don't think so we we need to always focus and check whether you know fundamentally this security is still in the space that it was or has something changed over there we need to check whether you know uh, anything drastic has changed because of which it's showing non performance or it's showing stagnancy in performance if that's not the case we must remain calm and we must stay invested because if we if we allow this emotion to take over we may actually make an irrational decision which again just like the other investments we may we may regret in the in the long run so these are the three emotions which we must be aware of we must keep in check greed fear and frustration if we are able to keep these in check and recognize these emotions as and when it comes that's the first first part of the story 
right because a lot of times i just give in to whatever is happening around me i see people becoming uh, people talk negatively I, i i start fearing my investments i start panicking and i start thinking it's not a great time maybe i should you know lose in my purses a bit uh, in the sense that i must i must dump whatever i'm holding and you know uh, and stay uh, stay out of the markets uh, you know if i'm feeling very positive i start thinking that i should uh, you know uh, invest without continuously doing the fundamental research which i have been so used to doing and i start thinking that everything is good so it will remain good forever and these situations if i am able to identify first i'll be able to keep them in check which is the first part and the more important part i will now move towards presenting you presenting to you five simple and easy to deploy strategies to keep these very emotions out of your investment journey the first of them is to always keep your focus on the big picture i'm sure we all will agree that we have not invested just for a day just for a month or just for a quarter we all usually invest for a long period of time we all will agree that if i if my motive of investment is wealth creation or wealth generation it will not happen in in a short period of time it is a long arduous journey and only those who stay true to that path who stay invested during the course of this journey get rewarded so the first thing that you need to do is always focus on the big picture markets will be you know what markets are they will be up there will be times when they are up there will be times when they are down that's the true nature of how markets are right i need to keep on focusing on the big picture and ask myself these questions i should ask myself are my goals still the same or have they changed i must ask myself is my financial situation still the same or has that changed i must ask myself is my risk taking ability is my risk tolerance still the same or has that changed i must also ask myself is my portfolio appropriately diversified and if the answer to majority of these questions is yes then i must stop my emotions from leading me to take any hasty decision i must remind myself of this big picture and i must remind myself that my best chance of creating generating wealth will only happen if i stay invested that's what i should be doing and focusing on the big picture once again if there are any queries or questions from your end to whatever we are discussing uh, just to reiterate i would i would request you to put it in the chat box which is there i would respond to each one of them towards the end of the session so moving on to what we were discussing is the first thing that you must do is we must focus on the big picture there's a reason why we have invested we understand that investments is something which will generate value or valuable return to me over a long period of time and in order to do that i must stay invested and only solely focus on this big picture that's the first thing the second thing i should that i should be doing in order to keep these emotions out of my investment process is to tune out the headlines you know uh, today you know the media plays a very very strong and major role in our lives right 
we are all connected to news applications, to social media applications, we get real time notifications, we get updates on anything and everything that's happening anywhere in the world. What we should also remember is that the media usually uses sensational eye catchy headlines to get readership and viewership on their post. This news needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. If I don't do that, it will only lead me to a heightened level of anxiety, which will then lead me to taking, you know, certain emotional decisions which may not augur well to my investments. We need to remember that no media forecaster you know, no media reporter has ever been able to accurately predict the directions of the market in the short or the long run, or maybe long run, yes, but in the short run, definitely not. We need to also remember that the performance of the market is always different from my personal portfolio performance. We must take this news with a pinch of salt. We need to tune out the irrelevant information and noise. We must use media as an advisor, but not let it become, you know, our, our master to decision making. We should not let it allow, we should not allow media uh, to dictate my investment decisions. You know, we must tally information. Today, you know, uh, it's so easy to check whether, whether the news that you're looking at is fake news or not, right? Uh, we must use that so that we know the news that I am looking at. Is it validated? Is it correct? Or is it something which is, which is, which is incorrect? Because what usually happens is, you know, a lot of times this incorrect news spreads faster and, and this creates certain kind of negativity, which then, you know, starts making feel that I need to react. So is the news actually authentic or not is something which I must look at, you know, it is, it will be, it is a good idea to have an overall understanding of what forces are driving the bullish or bearish trends of the market. Yes, it is. But only following the headlines and subsequently making investment decisions on what I read or hear can and in all probability lead me to take certain poor decisions. I need to ensure that I tune out the headlines and don't let every headline, you know, dictate what I should be doing with regards to my investments. That's the second strategy. The third strategy is stop checking your investments every day. It's so easy, right? And all of us, I think, are somewhere uh, guilty of this. You know, uh, we've created a portfolio on, on, on certain, certain application and every day, once a day or sometime, you know, we go and check that. The idea is, you know, to, to check, keep track, and if there is some post correction and that has required, then I can promptly take because I'm tracking it closely. Right? I've myself been guilty of it. I'll tell you my own uh, thing. Okay, uh, for for to, to share this. I mean, I started investing, uh, you know, in in mutual fund schemes in 2008, and 2008 9 was probably not a great year in terms of investing. So what used to happen? You know, every day I used to check on the application where I had created and uh, at that point in time, every day when I used to check, I used to see my value of portfolio being a little lower than the previous day. So obviously, when you just keep on looking at that, it makes you start feeling, have I made the right choice? I mean, is this the right way to do it? Have I made a mistake? A lot of questions keep coming in your mind. And, uh, you know, these questions start, uh, you know, putting doubt in your mind. And... That's how it was happening to me too. I don't know. Then, you know, one day, you know, I asked myself, if I remove this money, do I need it? And my answer was no. So if I don't need it, what will I do by removing this money right away? And I thought, I don't know what I will do. 
So I thought, you know, if I don't really need the money, let's just stay invested. And don't, I mean, I obviously check portfolios and the portfolios look nice and, you know, they look decent enough, uh, you know, uh, with whatever limited knowledge I have. Uh, so I thought, let's, let's just stay. And I stopped checking my portfolio on a regular basis. Believe me, it was something which I am now very happy with. Because I did not allow that you know, at that point in time to let me take a decision, which probably I would have regretted now, you know, to be very honest. So, so what I, what I, what I did was because I was not checking, you know, somewhere I was not getting restless and I was not getting emotional and I was not thinking that, you know, every day I'm seeing a little less than what I was seeing uh, the previous day. And in that sense, you know, I, was able to reduce this negative emotional impact and apply a long-term lens to look at my investments. And we've seen that, you know, uh, over a period of time, history has shown us that markets have charted a positive path for investors who have stayed invested. And these investors who have stayed invested have been aptly rewarded. So, Quite honestly, by not checking my portfolio every day, I am actually increasing the odds of staying the course. And hence, seeing the benefits of staying invested over the long run. So the third thing which we all should be doing is we must stop checking our investments every day. The fourth thing, that we must all do is something which is known as rupee cost average. I think this is a very uh, easy strategy to deploy. You know, uh, what is rupee cost averaging? It is a strategy in which you invest a fixed sum at regular predetermined intervals, just like your SIP in the mutual fund strategy that you can do. Now, what are you doing? You know, uh, you know, with an uh, within rupee cost averaging. Quite honestly, if the markets are downward trending. Uh, the price is dropped and your amount of investment is fixed. So you end up purchasing more units. In an upward trend, your previously purchased units actually produce capital gain for you and you continue buying. And in that upward trend, you see this combination of continuous buying and this capital gain actually, actually creating more money for you. So in that sense, I think this is a very, very simple strategy to deploy and we must look at a rupee cost average strategy and stay the course. We must not tamper with it unless this change is warranting from some fundamental change from my initial established situation. So keep investing in parts and periods over a period of time, you would see that, you know, uh, your cost of purchase is a little lower, which will then lead you to a little higher capital gain, which will, which is something which is an easier to deploy and perhaps a little less draining into my mind because I'm, I'm investing in PCP. That's the rupee cost averaging strategy. The fifth strategy is something which is diversification. You know, diversification helps me to diminish the emotional volatility or the emotional response to market volatility. It is a process of buying various investment avenues and not just investing in one or two securities. As we keep saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. We must create a portfolio comprising of various investment options. These different investment options will help me in tiding over volatility in any one investment. It will help me to create a portfolio which will hold on to short term volatility in a range of market conditions. We all need to develop a strategy that diversifies our investments 
across different asset classes to minimize any systemic or asset specific risk so if i were to conclude in a nutshell i would tell you first tune out your headlines you know don't just listen to whatever is there or whatever is on the headline and you know make them uh, you know uh, force you to take any emotional decision focus on your big picture stop checking your investments every day uh, you know they tend to push me towards taking an emotional decision because of the more so during during a downward trend if need be adopt something known as a rupee cost average strategy where you invest a fixed fixed amount over a long period of time and uh, and you average out your investments and lastly do diversify your portfolio and don't put all your eggs in one basket so that if there is any any short term volatility that is coming in the in any investment security overall because of diversification you are still able to achieve a little less volatility and a little more uh, you know overall achieving to your financial aspiration or investment need that you envisaged so that's what i wanted to share with you i would now like to take your questions queries if any and uh, you know i like i like to respond to those uh, queries or questions that you may have okay it seems there are no questions uh, so uh, then i would like to thank all of you for taking your time out and as usual we look forward to connecting again and conducting many more important relevant and topical sessions uh, which will help all of us to enhance our understanding on whatever issues of or 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 concepts of finance that we may have thank you very much uh, have a have a pleasant evening everyone see you bye bye Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.